Hey YouTube, this is James with Last Art Games. I'm actually very excited. This is my first console mod I've ever done. I picked up an AVS video mod off of eBay for this Atari we fixed. Normally the Atari only has an RF output, but this will let me hook it up to more modern televisions. I bought the kit off eBay for about 40 bucks, and it's supposed to come with everything needed to do this mod. This was called a drop-in mod, so I'm supposed to be able to install this without having to bend any pins or do any soldering directly to the motherboard itself. Let's open up the system so we can start installing this. We'll start by putting in the circuit board. It goes in place where the TIA chip is. That's this main chip here on the bottom of the motherboard. It goes into the socket that the TIA chip is in currently, and then the TIA chip installs into this new circuit board. It looks like one of the pins bent in shipping, but it's a quick fix to bend it back. So with my chip pullers, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the TIA chip and make the swap. I'm going to make sure I install this board correctly by lining up the notches in the sockets. And with that installed, it's time to start soldering on the wires. The kit just came with a Cat5 cable. There are additional ground pads on this chip, so I'm only going to be using one of the wires for ground and just ignoring the other pads. By doing that, I'll actually have enough wires to do this. So we'll just prep all of our wires and solder them into place. There's eight wires in total that I'm going to solder. We have one for ground two for the S video output, three for the composite video output, one for each of the connections, and it has two wires for what they're calling a pause mod.
With all the wires soldered into place, we'll go ahead and run the cable through the aluminum housing and put it back together. Next we're actually going to drill some holes in the case. I've put a piece of masking tape on the back and drawn out where I want the holes to go. With everything laid out it's time to do some drilling. I'm drilling a half inch hole for the S-Video port, then a quarter inch hole for all the others. With the holes drilled, it's time to start installing. This kit actually came with a small board that connects to the back of the S-Video port. With this, I can actually solder to these pads rather than to the pins on the port. It's a nice little added feature. We'll put our aluminum housing back into place and then do a quick test fit to make sure everything lines up. With that, we can start installing the wires. I'm going to do something now, which I should have done when I worked on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and prep all the wires before I start soldering. With all the wires prepped, we'll go ahead and start adding the two wires to the S-Video port. This is going to be the two required for the S-Video port and ground. Then we're going to add the two wires for the switch. This is the pause mod. Then we'll go ahead and put these two in place on the case.
Now we're going to work on the composite connection. The kit didn't come with enough ground wire. I'm going to use some additional black wire I have for the ground tabs on the composite connections. For this first go round, I'm going to give all the tabs their own wire separately. And I'll go ahead and install all the composite connections. And here's where I did something stupid. I tried to connect all three of these wires to the ground pad on the S-Video board. It was way too crowded to try to do that. So I took everything back apart and tried a different way. Rather than giving every tab their own separate wire, I just daisy chained them together so that there's only one wire at the very end that I need to connect. This worked much better. With ground connected, we'll add the final wires to the composite connections. We'll reattach the second board and give it a test. And it works! And with it working, we'll put the console back together. With it all said and done, there's a few things I would have done differently. The first thing is actually go slower on drilling my holes in the case. There's actually a few chips and cracks from where the plastic was really brittle. The next thing is I would have prepped all my wires before soldering like I did the second time. And when I was soldering to the main board, I would have done that before installing it. That way I'm not soldering over top of the motherboard of the Atari. With all said and done though, I'm very happy with this mod and it was a lot of fun to put together. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing for more.